Hello, welcome back to Code Station 33. Today we are going to look at another library in the library of Arduino code. Remember, a library is a way of storing functionality for us that other people have written and allows us to use different components and different things. So that way uh, we don't have to write the code. It's this idea of black box abstraction where we don't need to know how the car works in order to drive it. And today, what we're going to look at is something called EEPROM. That's E-E-P-R-O-M. You may have noticed that when you, res when you unplug the power or hit the reset button on the Arduino, any variables or data that's stored in the Arduino go away. They get erased. They get deleted. Um, this, in a lot of applications, is OK, but suppose you had an application where you wanted to be able to keep track of data from moment to moment if the power goes off. So let's say you have your Arduino connected up to a solar system and the Arduino only powers on every once in a while just to take some data in order to uh, reserve that battery for that solar system. You know, maybe you have it set up and it's taking, let's say, temperature readings or it's taking um, some other kind of information to keep uh, data for us. And if it turns off, then any of that data that we had saved or stored gets erased. Now, there are other, there are ways of using external storage with the Arduino. However, built into the Arduino is something called an EEPROM, which is essentially a space in memory that allows you to write to the board and it retains that information when it's unplugged. Now, there are two kinds of memory in a computer. There's RAM, which is random access memory, and as soon as the power gets disconnected, that RAM gets cleared out. That's what typically we work with on the Arduino. But then there's this idea of ROM, and ROM is this piece of memory that gets stored when the power goes off. And every computer has ROM. That ROM gets stored on a chip, and that information is often used to start a computer. Now, your desktop computers uses ROM along with some other kind of storage medium, like a hard drive or a static hard drive, in order to save more information than what typically can be stored on a ROM. The Arduino doesn't have any kind of hard drive. It just has a ROM chip. And we can write to that ROM chip. However, the Arduino has limitations in the number of times you can actually write to the ROM chip. After about 100,000 times writing to a particular address on the ROM chip, it degrades. And you can't use that address anymore. And then there's a limited number of addresses that you can write to on the Arduino. So there's a, a consequence to writing to this EEPROM. I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you really, really needed to or there was some um, piece of data that you really wanted to keep track of because you could end up destroying the board after a while. But if it's for a temporary application and you only need to record data in smaller pieces, then this is a great way to save that data when the board resets. There are other libraries that allow you to connect external storage, like a SD card or a USB stick, to your Arduino to save that information. And if you have um, information that is more substantial, you might want to save that information to some other um, storage medium. And again, you'd be using another library. So let's dive in and take a look at the EEPROM library. Uh, the circuit for this is really simple. It's just a button because all we're going to do is keep track of the number of times we press a button. So we have a button on the board. I have it connected to ground and I have it connected to pin 2 on the board. Let's dive into the code. So when we look at our code here, let me zoom in on a little this. Oops. There we go. We can see that we have our EEPROM included, 
like we talked about this before, the way of including a library that is stored as we write the hashtag, then the word include, and then the name of the library in a less than symbol and greater than symbol. We're going to go through now and basically use the same code we did before when we used a button. Remember, there was a couple special things we had to do with a button because when you press a button, it's really sensitive and we have to make sure that we're not getting phantom data. So there's a couple things we had to do with timing to make sure that you know it was truly a button press. So most of this code that you're going to see that we're going to go through here has to do with the button. The EEPROM code is actually really straightforward. There's not a whole lot to it. Uh, and that's because of we have this library. And you'll find that a lot of libraries, you really don't have to do much to make them work. So you can see we defined a, a pin, an LED pin is pin 13. Uh, that's the pin on the board. Uh, button two is on pin two, button pin is on pin two. Then remember we did this thing where we had the button state and it was either a one or a zero. And then we had to keep track of the last time we pressed it. And then we had that deep bounce time that was in milliseconds. So that was all related to how we used to deal with a button press. So this is code we've looked at before, but it's definitely worth looking at again because it's important to know how a button has to be coded on the Arduino uh, so it can make it um, function better. Then we have this variable called counter. This is the information we're going to store in the EEPROM. It's basically, we're going to keep track of how many times we have pressed that button on the board. We set up our pin modes like we're used to doing. Remember, the button mode uses that input pin up, pull up uh, constant. So that way, we are making sure that the button is not reading data in the background through um, any kind of interference. So it's not just an input, it's an input pull up, which ties it to a resistor. We start our serial monitor, and now this is the first time we're going to use EEEPROM. We're gonna do something a little different here. Um, in order to make our EEPROM reset itself, so it can restart it back at zero, we're gonna do kind of a trick. We're gonna set the counter to whatever is stored in the EEPROM. So if we haven't stored anything yet, this is the first time we've done it, we're gonna read from location address zero, and this will allow us to read from the same address over and over and over again. But before we do anything else at location zero, we're gonna write a zero. And we say, wait a minute, we just read a zero. We just read from that location. Why are we gonna erase it? Isn't the whole idea to keep track of what's going on? And it is. Later on in the code, what we'll do is we'll rewrite that counter after we increment it back to the EEPROM. And this statement right here, the EEPROM.write, won't do anything unless we press the reset button twice. If we press the reset button twice, the second time we press it, we have not incremented the counter. And what will happen is it will, re it will rewrite the counter to zero and starting the counter at zero as opposed to starting it at the last value. And we'll see that as we go further into the code. When we look at our loop, we're checking our button state. We're doing our subtraction using that mills method, that mills function, uh, minus the last press to check to see if it's greater than the debounce time. So that, ba that way we're making sure we're not bouncing on that button. Um, now we're going to check our button state compared to the last button state. Remember, we did that before. So if the button is pressed, essentially, right? only if the button is pressed, then we're going to increment the counter. And we're going to write to address 0. Again, this first position here is the address, the value of the counter. So if we press the reset button twice, that means we never press the button on the board, so we never actually store the counter information and increment the counter. And that's how we'll end up resetting the counter. So it's a cute little trick in code. If we take this out, then right here, comment it out. That means every single time, it'll just keep incrementing it. It'll never reset the counter. So this is a nice little thing and it allow us to reset that counter. There are other ways of doing it. Maybe you have another button on the board that's a reset button. So there's a couple different things that you could do. 
but this is how we're choosing to do it. Uh, this is turning the pin on just to make sure the light flashes once. Uh, sets our last button state again that was related to when we talked about recording the button state. You can go back and look at that video if you want to go more into detail about how that button works. And then we're just going to print out the counter value. Again, here we're testing to see if the last state was a one, then we're going to set the pin to low, basically turns it off. So basically if we're not pressing the button, the light is off. If we are pressing the button, the light is on and we're writing to the EEPROM the counter value. So let's go and take a look at this and see how it works. I'm going to move my button closer so I can see me clear this. You can see I've done this before. Now there is something special about the fact that we're doing this in Tinkercad. When we turn the power off in Tinkercad, it actually clears out the EEPROM. And that's an, a function of Tinkercad. So when I start this simulation, the EEPROM is now ready to save and save information. As soon as I hit stop, it clears out the EEPROM. If you were doing this on a real physical device, it would not clear out the EEPROM. It would save the EEPROM for us and not end up deleting the information. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use this reset button, which is this little red button over here. Every time we press the reset button, it will clear out, if we press it twice, it will clear out the EEPROM. If I press it once, it momentarily turns the power off without stopping the simulation. And we've talked about this button before, I believe. This is just resets the loop, essentially, and reruns all that setup information without actually stopping the simulation. If you were using this in real life, this EEPROM would work whether you unplugged it or press the reset button one time. So let's look at our counter. So you can see our counter is a one. Pressed it one time, twice, three times, four times. I'm gonna hit the reset button once. That turns the power off momentarily. Then I'm gonna press the button again and you can see that it continues counting five, six, seven. Press the button again, continues counting. If I press it twice, once, that now in the background has stored a zero, and if I don't press that black button again to increment the counter, that zero is getting written to the EEPROM, and it stays there. So now I'm gonna press it again, the reset button, and then I start hitting the counter and you can see I'm now back to one. The double press of the reset ends up actually resetting it. If I go ahead and comment out that little line of code right here, where we write to address zero, the value zero, and start the simulation again. Let me clear this out. Now, one, two, three, press the reset button five, six, no matter how many times I press the reset button in a row, you know, I press it a whole bunch of times, watch, it's still keeping track of the value. So we can see that that EEPROM value will now stay constant. And we have all of our data stored. If I unplug this in the real world, that data would still be stored. So that's all for how the EEPROM works and another fabulous library that's stored in Arduino. We're going to, I think we're to the point now where you could try looking at some of the libraries yourself. So go ahead and explore, look for different libraries, look in Tinkercad and look at some of the examples that are there, how to use the different sensors. And each of those sensors comes with a library that is included with the way the sensor works. So do some exploring, take a look, and I'll see you next time.